Okay. And let's get the show on the road. So like I said, we're going to start with the, the previous examples. From the end of last class. And the first one. Yeah, what is the rule? Like, that turns into 1 over that times du. Uh, it's, uh, sorry. Yeah, you have the function over the function itself. Uh, that's not the rule. You're falling into the thing that I said not to do last time. Okay. Uh, what's the rule? Chain rule? Derivative of u over u? No. Derivative of l in u is equal to derivative of u over u. Just pay attention. Do not forget the left side of the rule. Right, so what's the rule? Don't just tell me the right side. The equation is the rule. Yes? Uh, one thing I have to point out, you know, last class, you know, for a part D, yeah. if instead of x squared minus 3, it's x squared minus 2, actually. Okay, yeah. By mistake, and it's fixed. Mm -hmm. uh, D. of 5 to the cinch. What is that? 5 to the power of cinch of x times cos of x times natural log of 5. Mm -hmm. uh, can we say the rule? Like What's that? Power rule? Uh, no. What is the power Exponential. Is a to power b equal to e to power b logarithms of the a? A to the power of B. <coughs> A to the power of B equals A to, to the B ln of A prime. Right? Nope. Well, I don't know. No, I think you're missing something. I usually use U, but I guess okay. it's the word. So U prime A to the U ln of A. Yeah. Or if you want A to the B, B prime A to the B ln of A. That would be the rule. The rules are important. The rules are your templates. The rules tell you when you're doing something wrong, not how you feel. Uh, e. How do we do this one? Yeah. Dr. Paul, it's secant square root of x times x minus. It's nice to put the x in the front. Uh, yeah. Minus tangent of x over x squared. And what room did you use? The quotient rule. Quotient rule, right? 
bottom tensor over the top minus the top tensor of the bottom over the bottom squared. F. The integral of tanch. How did you do that? And uh, it's not a negative sign. That's how it's on light. And so you plug that in, and what you would have here is 1 over u, du. And what's the rule for that integral of this? It's what? Coming in? Get in here. Ln of u. Absolute value. Absolute value. And our u was cosh, so that's ln of Technically, you don't need the absolute value because cosh u is always positive. Uh, but I would keep it because while it's not necessary, it's not wrong, and it's, there's a potential of getting it wrong if you don't have the absolute value. So just like keep the absolute value. Just the uh, don't you have to change the u back to x when the question given? Uh, that was supposed to be the case. Okay. Now uh, g. Next week for the quiz, do we have to know about uh, the inverse derivatives for uh, like hyperbolic secant, cosecant? No, everything I put in a box is what you have to. Okay. Other questions? Well, other than it was the answer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Every time I derive a formula, I box it. I'm, I'm pretty sure I was careful to only box some of the inverse rules and not all of them. So whenever you see me do something like that, it's intentional. Javon, yes. Does anyone, like, let's put, let's, you know, if there's any integral problem, and someone puts the ln and plus the c, if it's like an ln type of, you know, antiderivative, and someone just put the ln plus the plus c, but without the absolute value symbol, what happens? Uh, you mean, like, if they, if we have one over x? And they wrote ln of x plus c. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's say this is a quiz, and that was supposed to be the answer choice. They'd get it wrong. What? They would get it wrong. 
let's say it's on a test, and it's like a multi-step pro process, and they do something like this in one line of that whole thing, I got the one. Like you're not, you're never gonna get away with it. In other words, I'll always deduct at least one point. And on the quizzes, each problem is one point, so on a quiz, you lose the whole point. It's like without the absolute like yes. it looks identical though. Uh, no, it doesn't, it's not identical. Right, and an x versus an absolute value of x, these are very different things. This guy looks like a v. This guy goes straight through like that. They're very different things. They're not the same at all. But they look, well, maybe not exactly the same, but look almost just like the, the value symbol. Oh, no, symbolically, that's also a thing. Things will look uh, very similar from time to time but the nuances are actually important. The one little line, it, it, it'll matter. You, you need to be very detail-oriented when, when you're doing these things. To be slightly OCD. Otherwise, you risk getting in trouble. And, okay. Does their class get curved? No. Okay, let's move on. So, uh, let's actually get started. All that was just warm up and we're just getting hyperbolics out of the way. So I'll quiz you on that stuff next week, but after that I'll probably never quiz you on it again. Uh, but let's actually get to what we want to do here. We do part one of the course where we're going to talk about uh, fundamental integration techniques. Calc 1, you spent most of your time on derivatives and limits and applications of derivatives, and you did a little bit of integration at the end up to integration by substitution. Now we're pretty much going to complete the integration picture, well, complete the foundation of the integration computational theory. Um, so the basics we're going to learn about integration, we're gonna, I'm going to teach you a bunch of techniques, seven or eight of them. Um, and you're just going to learn how to integrate many different kinds of functions. That's going to be the first part, um, just knowing how to calculate into it. So uh, picking up where top one left off. Uh, let's continue the art of integration. with a random Calc 2 integral. Any integral that I give you in this class, right? Show, an integral shows up on a quiz or a test or something like that. Integral of f of x dx. Okay. How do you compute such a thing? Well, one, the first thing you're going to do, let's call that step one, is try to apply a basic rule. It's going to be the first thing you try to do. What is a basic rule? Just so that everyone knows what I'm talking about. Basic rules. These are the rules that tell you how to integrate uh, certain elementary functions. So for example, the power rule for integration would be a basic rule. If your n equals minus 1, you get 1 over x. Um, integral of sine of x is minus cosine of x plus c. Um, all that stuff, right? The basic ones, the things that tell you how to integrate individual functions um, or individual classes of functions. These are the basic rules. Um, again, you think of them as templates. And if you have a random problem, what you're going to try to do first is see, does it fit exactly with one of these templates? Can I drop it right on top of this thing I'm looking at, and everything's going to match up perfectly, including if there are lines or squiggles and all that good stuff. Um, so that's the first thing you're going to try to do. Um, now, sometimes that work, 
rarely in a class like this, but um, you never know. Step two, if a basic rule doesn't apply, next thing you're going to do, try to simplify to apply a basic rule. So sometimes things won't look exactly like the templates that you have in your head, um, but you can simplify them to make them look like the templates that you have in your head. Or a combination of them. Remember like a sum of these integration distributes across sums and you can factor constants out, et cetera. Uh, but like, for example, and there was a problem like this on the first quiz, but say, four is two minus two x squared. See a random integral like that? Doesn't look like a basic rule, but I do realize that there's one thing in the denominator. I can uh, divide that thing into each thing. That's something that we can do. And I can then Simplify that a little more, and that's going to be 4 over x minus 2x to the minus 2 plus 3x to the minus 4 dx, right? And now it looks like basic rules, right? These two guys are going to look like this rule after the constant is factored out. This guy looks like this rule after the 4 is factored out. So now you can just apply the basic rules. That's 4 ln x. How are you doing this one? It's going to be what? Huh? 2 over x. <coughs> this one? Negative 3, 4, x to the minus 3. Negative what? First two things you always think about when you see a random integral. Here's the third thing you're going to think about. Step three. This needs to get better at responding. Responding quicker. Respond louder. Be brave. Confident one. Try a substitution, right? As in what most students know is u substitution, even though substitution is a better word. Try substitution. Try to substitute. u equals blah, right? Uh, and you're going to, if something is complicated, you can't simplify it. The next thing you're going to try to do, can I substitute something that will make it simple, right? And so in Calc 1, you learned, OK, I have to take u, and I have to replace something that makes it complicated. And I have to make sure that the derivative of that thing is somewhere else in the function. That rule is no longer true, by the way. A very simplistic view of things. Sometimes you won't be able to see the derivative, but it's a substitution still will work. And of course, you transform it into something nice that will look like a base rule, and then you can do the integration. I'm not going to go through the nuances of substitution. I'm going to assume that you're all experts on substitution. But it is the third thing you would try. Now, after this point, so that's the third thing. After this, the steps are in no particular order, right? That's where the easy life ends. That's why Calc 1 ended right there. See, after that, now integration really becomes an art. There's no standard fourth thing to do. Um, it's going to depend on what you're looking at, and we're going to cover a bunch of techniques, and I'm going to tell you when they might be useful. Um, I might tell you as I'm doing them, but I'll probably also, towards the end, 
just look back at everything that we've learned and wrap up and say, okay, all these techniques I'm, I taught you, here's when you do this one, here's when you do that one, here's when you do that one, in general, as guidelines, because there's no hard and fast rule. So really, there is no step four. Right? Everything after this, all the techniques that I'm going to teach you after this, it, it, it really it's going to depend. It's going to depend on what you're looking at. Um, but if we started going th through the techniques, the next one is where the story begins for us. So to me, this is the real beginning of Tao It's called Integration by Parts. This is 8.2. And we are going to see why it has that name, as well as how to do it. Now, if you're paying attention, uh, you do realize as far as the real um, strategic machinery goes, in terms of differentiation, sure you have all these basic rules like the power rules and things, but in terms of strategies, uh, there are really only two. You have the chain rule, which is a super important one, and the product rule. What about the quotient rule? You use the product rule to prove the quotient rule. Product, the quotient was a byproduct, right? Um, those are the two main ones. Substitution is the reverse of the chain rule. That's what it is, right? This is a method because someone just figured out a way. How do I reverse if someone did a chain rule on my on my function? Um, integration reverses the other important technique. So this is the reverse of the product rule. Can we do the product rule backwards? Yes, is the answer. That's what we're going to learn how to do now. So, what does the product rule say? Hmm? Yeah? The derivative of f times g will be equal to f prime g plus f g. That is the product rule. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to turn this into an integration rule. Uh, I'm going to integrate both sides with respect to x. Now, a fundamental theorem of calculus tells us that the left side, the integral derivative, the integral and the derivative are going to cancel each other. They're inverse operations. Yes, you'll get a plus c and all that, but just let's be a little bit sloppy at this point. Um, and over here, we have that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to solve for one of these integrals. It almost doesn't matter which one you solve for, but just to fit nicely with formulas that we're going to use in the traditional sense, we're going to solve for that guy. So this means that the integral of f g prime is going to be equal to f g minus the integral of f prime g dx. And at this point, again, just for aesthetic reasons and to be to match up with how things are traditionally <coughs> written down. I'm going to do a slight change of notation here. So I'm going to call f of x u. I'm going to call g of x v, which means I can differentiate and writing this in Leibniz notation, f prime of x dx is going to be du prime of x dx is going to be dv. Right, so you can find du dx and then multiply both sides by the dx. Find the dv dx, multiply both sides by the dx. And now I'm just going to swap these out for those guys over there. What we obtain is the following. The integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. And this side is known is what we call the integration by parts formula. And that is how we reverse the product rule. The formula says, if you want to find an integral that looks like this, u dv, the answer is going to be this expression over here. It's going to be u times v minus the integral of v du. And of course, at this point, ones with much insight among you are going to realize, but you just gave me another integral to compute. Well, yes, but the idea is many times the integral over here is easier to do than the integral over there. And 
we're going to show you how to try to structure things so that the integral over here tends to be easier most of the time. That's the idea. Let's actually do an example. Integral of x times e to the x. Let's do that integral. Okay, so what's the first thing you want to do here? Huh? Identify a variable. What does that mean? Like pick one of the two to be at the back of the of x. No, the first thing you do. Does this look like a basic rule? Always the first thing you think. Does that look like a basic rule? No. What's the next thing you want to do? Can I simplify this to look like a basic rule? No. Can I substitution work? What would you substitute? And your du would be? And how would you actually plug that into this? substitution, no? Yeah, the parts. No, you're doing, you said substitution could work. Yeah, no? I meant it's down opposite. Oh, this is not substitution. This is integration by parts. When I say substitution, I mean u equals this, oh, find okay. du, oh, swap okay. everyone. Yeah, then I'll. Yeah. Yeah? Is someone out there? Now, you could go somewhere with this with a substitution. Unfortunately, what's going to end up happening is you're going to end up with uh, the integral of an ln getting involved. Because if you're u is e to the x, of course, your x is going to be ln of u. And so the ln of u is going to show up. And now you're going to think, do I have a base group for integrating ln of u? And at this point, you don't. Um, it's not typically shown in top one. So the substitution isn't going to work, right? But you have to think about it, right? First thing, basic rule. Second thing, can I simplify it to the base group? Third thing. Can a substitution work? Always those three things first, every single time. Every time you see an integral, go through those three thoughts, go through your head in that order every time. Now, all those three thoughts did not work out. So why are we doing? Well, we learned about integration by parts the other day. Let's try that. And there's going to be things about this that's going to tell you that integration by parts might be the thing um, that you would try. So now that you decide on, OK, I'm going to do integration by parts on this, right? You made that decision. This takes a few seconds in your head, right? Because you go through, yeah, that's not that good. Right? You're going to have a lot of experience, hopefully, by the time you're tested on this, to the point where you, you can rule out what's not going to work very quickly. So you land on the, the, the conclusion that I'm going to use integration by parts. Now how do we get it done? So the first step is to choose the parts. Right, so this is why it's called integration by parts. You think of the u and the v as parts of your integral. So one, or more specifically, you think of as the u and the dv as parts of your integral. So you're going to choose someone who gets to play the role of u. You're going to choose someone else who gets to play the role of dv. Um, so what do you want to do here? u and dv, right? That's the first thing you choose make your choices. What do you want for u? So that leaves you, so if this is the u, it means that has to be the dv. Right? So this means e to the x dx is your dv. Javon, so if you were to use this you know, formula, u would be to subtract integral of v du, the u would be the x, the d would be the e to the x power, yes. and the v would be e to the x. And right, the right. So here, one. once you made this choice, of course, you're going to have to fill out the rest of the formula. So you're going to have to figure out these other things. You have to figure out what is the du, what is the v. The right? v is the e So the, the du is going to be what? The du is the 1. The du is the du 1. du is 1 dx. The v is the e to the x. That's e to the x. And, and now what you're going to do? Is plug is into, into the formula. So plug into the formula. E, so that means is x so what are you times e to the x is x e to the x subtract the integral of e to the x you know, times 1. So that means it's the integral of e to the x, which is equivalent to e to the x. Right. So this here, what is that? That's, we have a basic rule for yeah, that. Yeah, e to right? the x. So every time you, you see an integral, you're going to go through that process in your head again. Okay, 
This integral leads me to having to compute this integral. How do I compute that integral? Well, does the basic rule work? Yes, right? We have a basic rule for that. So this is going to be, let's put it over here, x e to the x minus e to the x plus c. Plus c. That is your answer. And therefore, what you know, you know what, you know, you know, according to what you're seeing, x e to the x power subtract e to the x power plus c. You know that you did you know that you can factor it? That means like you know e to the x parentheses x minus one plus You e. could, but I, I wouldn't really care at this point. It doesn't really make life any simpler. That's fine. Living it like that. Um, but I factored it, you know. And it's fine. It'll be fine. Um, they're exactly the same. So the only time when factoring is really kind of important is if like there's a whole division that you want to see if you can simplify and you can cancel stuff. Um, but it, it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, but that's the answer. And you can check that if you were to differentiate this, you would get x e to the x. Or you can check it. Um, now, here's one thing I want you to note. Not to put any pressure on you here, but uh, your choice matters. For example, suppose we had uh, made the opposite choice, right? Suppose I had said u equals e to the x, and my dv is equal to x dx, right? Suppose we had made that choice. What would have happened? <coughs> d would have been what? e to the x, e to the x dx. Yeah. b would have been what? Yeah. Now if I plug that into the integral, into the formula, right? So here we're doing the u times b minus the integral of the b du. If I plug it into that formula, u times b minus the integral of v times du. And now you end up with having to do this integral. Now one thing you'll notice about that integral it looks harder than the one that we started with. <laughs> we went from an x e to the x to an x squared e to the x. Seems like we're going in the wrong direction. That's actually harder. That makes my life harder. You wouldn't want to do that. So making the right choice in the first place is a very important thing to know how to do. And does anyone actually know how to do that? Why, why was x the right choice for you here? How to choose? Isn't it because when you derive it, you get one, one ds, so it just kind of like, yeah, gets out of the way. That's a very good guess. Um, but when we're going, if you were to do something like this, ln would actually be the right one to choose. And um, so why? Why is that? What do you actually look for? Yeah. Okay, so, um, u sh so, the, so to decide u, u should be limited in integration, meaning that if you um, integrate it um, to one prime or double prime, it would hit one or zero, whereas v can continue its integration for multiple steps. No? No. Okay. That's the pretty logical way to do it. But logical isn't always better, okay. it turns out. There's an art to this. And, yeah? Um, I was going to say, you should make your uh, dv, whatever yeah. will have the simpler integral once you... Uh, no, that's not always true either. Yeah. Uh, use, uh, uh, for you, you use liate. Liate. So, it turns out, there's a mnemonic that we came up purely by trial and error. Because like I say, integrals aren't straightforward. You come at them with a strategy, oh yeah, I'll always do this because it'll make this easier. It doesn't always work out. So through many years of trial and error and blood, sweat, and tears, we've come up with a way that works better most of the time. And that way is called liate. This is a mnemonic. Mnemonic is just a device to remember uh, some larger factor strategy. And here's how it actually works. The L stands for logarithm. The I stands for inverse trig function. Right, and vertically is very common. Okay. The A stands for algebra.
which is a misnomer. They, what they really mean when they say algebra is polynomial. But it doesn't really flow well. <laughs> like Leate, let's just throw a vowel in there and we all know what it means. Algebraic doesn't mean polynomial, that's totally not what it means, but that's what everyone knows it means. Um, there's also another version of this called Lippet, because you know th those people who are anal, it's not algebraic, it's polynomial, let's get a P in there. Yeah. But Leate is good enough, it's more traditional. Um, and T stands for trig function, and the E stands for exponential. Very hard. That's Liotte. Now, how does it actually work? On the left, you get to be you. First. Moving down this list, or to the right of this list, these guys get to be you. Last. So, if you look at the x e to the x integral, you will notice that the x falls in the A category, the E falls in the E category. And according to Liotte, A shows up in the list before E. So this guy, choose this for you. Now even Liotte isn't an end-all be-all. It turns out that you can use integration by parts if you have two of the same kinds of functions present. Um, but those get a little bit tricky. We'll do some examples like that a little bit later on. But for now, if you have two different kinds of functions present, uh, you use Liotte to know how to choose. So for integration by parts, there are two things you need to remember. First, the formula. The integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of u du. Second thing you need to remember, Liotte. It tells you how to pick the u. Right? Now, none of it is guaranteed, uh, but if integration by parts works, then Liotte, chances are, is going to get you the desired result. So that's uh, basically how you choose uh, with a mnemonic. Let's do another example. Integrate. So, you see this integral. First thing you're going to think, is there a basic rule that looks like this? No. Can I simplify this to look like a basic rule? No. Will substitution work? Technically, yeah, you can get a substitution to work, but it's actually going to lead you back into something to get integration by parts. You will get that there with experience. So, integration by parts is what we're going to choose. Now, once you know I'm going to do integration by parts, next thing you have to do is make the choices. What is u? What is tv? Well, what is u? Ln. Ln. And what is dv? X squared. It's going to be the other guy. And why? Because this guy is L. This guy is A. In this list, L comes before A. The L gets to be the u. So now, we're going to plug into that formula. So this means that integral is u times v minus the integral of v du. over 3 ln x minus 1 third x squared dx which brings us to Let's go 
another example. Again, first thing. Does the basic rule apply? No. Second thing. Can I simplify it? Is the basic rule? No. Third thing. Does the substitution work? No. Okay. Set on integration by parts. What is u? Technically, the t and the e in the uh, Lyotte formula can actually be uh, rearranged, uh, turns out. So if you chose the u to be e to the x and the dv to be the sine x, it would have still worked out. But the t and the e are the only ones that you can kind of be a little bit loose with. The others, you can kind of want to follow the update exactly. Anyway, du is going to be our cosine. E is going to be e to the x. And we're going to plug it into this formula. So u times v minus the integral of the v du. So to compute this integral, I need to compute over this. Now, how do I do this integral? Can you add on the other side? Huh? Can you? Second parts. Of course, does the basic rule work? Can it simplify? No. Substitution? No. Guess I have to do another by parts. Okay. U equals uh, cosine of x, dv equals u to the x dx, or du is going to be equal to minus sine of x, d is going to be e to the x. So this is going to be equal to e to the x sine of x minus parentheses u times v minus the integral, and now that becomes plus the integral, of e to the x sine of x to the x. Okay, now what? Can you, um, can you distribute the negative? Oh, into the first one. What does that mean? It's impossible. It's just going to go on forever. You just, you know, nowhere to stop it. Okay? <laughs> start crying. You start, no. Well, someone already said it. Uh, at this point, your calculus journey is done. It's now an algebra problem. Right? How is it an algebra problem? This is the guy you care about. We have an equation with that guy where he shows up in two positions. How do we solve for that guy? Well, combining like terms, of course. So we're going to distribute the negative, take this guy, move it to that side, right? So it's like I have A is equal to B minus you know, C plus the A. Right? You move the A over, you're going to have 2A. And then you just divide both sides by 2. Algebra. And so I can actually do that and solve for this integral. class of integration by parts problems that you can get. Sometimes you can have a revolving scenario where you start off with an integration by parts and after going through it maybe once or twice or three times, you come back and you end up with the same integral that you started off with. Whenever that happens, don't panic. You didn't necessarily do something wrong. Of course, you would double check. But you can just get out of this loop by just using algebra. 
Yeah. But can you explain back what you did with the letters? Like algebra. Like if, if this is an equation, right? Think of this is like the A, that's like the B, that's like the C, that's like the A. It's really just an equation. It's uh, an equation that's linear in these guys. So I just expand the parentheses, bring the A to one side, divide by two. That's how I got here. Let's do another. Um, are we allowed to do a repetition method? I don't know what that is. Um. So, you have that. First thing you're going to think, can I apply a basic rule? No. Is no apply to apply a basic rule? No. Substitution work? No. Okay. True is integration by parts. U is going to be, your DB is going to be, that's an A, that's an E. So X cubed, E to the X dx. D is going to be 3X squared, D is going to be E to the X. You're going to plug these in. This is going to be equal to sometimes. Sometimes when people get lazy, they write, they replace the drill with a variable. Okay, so this is going to be u times v minus the integral of v with another integral. The base rule word? No, we simplify it. No, we substitute. No, integration by parts again. You're going to again choose by the octet. Okay, u equals x squared, dv equals e to the x dx, u would be 2x, v would be equal to e to the x. And so this is going to be x cubed, e to the x minus 3 times, open parentheses, u times v minus the integral of v d. With another two. Press again. Space rule work. Okay, no. Integration by parts again. Okay. U equals x. dv equals e to the x dx. R d u is equal to 1 dx. R v is equal to e to the x. And we get that i is going to be equal to okay, x cubed e to the x minus 3, open parentheses, x squared, e to the x, minus 2, open parentheses. So we're going to have a couple of parentheses here. u times v, minus the integral of the u. Okay. We have another integral. Can this screw work? Yeah. Okay, that, finally, finally, oh my god, okay. So now you're like, all right, so that's going to be 3x squared e to the x. Multiply that out, that's going to be positive 6x e to the x. And you multiply that out, that's going to be negative 6e to the x plus c. And that's your answer. So every now and then, you end up in a situation like this. It kind of, you have to repeatedly do integration by parts. You slowly break it down, one step over to another. Break it down, right? So we started with the next two, we broke it down to the next squared, to broke that down to a next, then broke that down to just the one, and eventually we got to the answer. So yeah, you can repeatedly apply integration by parts. That's actually a thing. And yes, I'm sorry. Is it minus three x squared e squared or e to the x? 
that this yeah. that should be an X. C to the X. And now you're probably like, well, okay, that was slightly annoying. There's no way Joan's going to make us do more than three integration by parts in a row, right? Like he wouldn't do that to us. No. Nah. He's not that crazy. Okay, next example. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. So now you're going to go through the, the phases in your mind. Okay. And at this point, you might even be tempted to employ step zero. Step zero. Nah. <laughs> no way. We ain't not going to do a third man. No, uh, uh. no. It's about respect. Okay, I'm going to draw the line. I'm not going to have to deal with five nested parentheses. Jerome's trying to catch me in and out for a mistake. There's another option. So what we're going to do is it turns out There's another way. There's a way to streamline integration by parts, it turns out. And of course, once upon a time, not a lot of people knew about it, but you know, it's the inf information age. More people know about it now. Uh, enter. It's called the tabular metric. to see a commercial in black and white. Are you tired of doing your integration by parts over and over? The <laughs> dream! <laughs> and it comes in color. There's a better way! <laughs> Order now for 1995. <laughs> okay, tabular method. It's a whole other thing. So all the new cool kids are doing it, right? Uh, let me explain to you how this method actually works. Suppose you have an integral. I'm going to slightly switch to f and g again. So you have this integral uh, that you want to use integration by parts on. Okay? So let's say f is the guy that you're going to make your u. G is the guy that you're going to make your v. Turns out there's a better way, a tabular method. Uh, the root word, of course, here is table. So we're going to actually draw a table. Um, so what you can do is you can draw a table below this integral. how it's going to work. So, step one, table, as shown, and repeatedly integrate and differentiate as appropriate. Okay, so what we're going to do with the u, we know the u is the guy we are going to uh, differentiate. So what we're going to do is we're going to repeatedly differentiate. So f, find the first derivative, find the second derivative, find the third derivative, find the fourth derivative, da 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 da, all the way down to nth derivatives. Well, how many derivatives do I need to find? I'm going to let you know soon, right? You're going to find a bunch of derivatives, right? Where n is going to be some predetermined number of times you need to actually find the derivative. Then what you're going to do is you're going to integrate the dv repeatedly over and over. So I'm going to use uh, subscripts. So that's the first integral. That's the second integral. That's the third integral. Fourth integral. Da, 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 all the way down to n integrals. So that's not standard notation. So let me actually just put that in. Gn equals n integral of g. Okay. So now. You're going to multiply along the diagonals. Alternating signs starting with plus. 
do I mean by that? Well, you're going to take this f, you're going to multiply by that g1. It's going to take a plus sign. Take the f prime, multiply by the g2, it takes a minus sign. Take the f double prime, multiply by g3, it takes a plus sign. So on and so forth. Eventually, you're going to get all the way down to the end of the table. At this point, you don't know it's going to be plus or minus. And then what you're going to do to actually finish off, you multiply straight across like that. And that's going to be plus or minus. Third step. Right, so you just multiply along the diagonals, top left to bottom right. And starting with a plus, you alternate the signs of your multiplication. Three. You are pretty much going to add up all these products, uh, with the exception being the guy in blue, which is going to end with an integral. So this integral, it turns out, is going to be equal to f times g1 minus f prime times g2 plus f double prime times g3 minus etc. Da 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 da. And finally, what you're going to end with is an integral. Now, at this point, you don't know what the sign is going to be. It depends on if you have an odd or even number of rows. It's going to be the integral of the last guy, f to the nth prime, g and x. And it turns out that is going to be the answer. This is called the tabular method. And it's exactly integration by parts. In fact, the reason why we have alternating signs is because of those nested parentheses where each you have a negative change in all of the successive parentheses. So you get this alternating signs. So it's kind of like uh, an algorithm for doing integration by parts over and over and over again um, with less psychological drag. Now, how do you know how big the table has to be? I'm going to tell you to know exactly how how many products you would actually need. How big is the table? So here's how big the table. Stop if one of three things occur. One, if you eventually zero. It's the first thing. So, for example, if your f was like an x to the fifth, for example, if you keep differentiating x to the fifth, eventually what's going to happen is you're going to end up with a constant and the next layer is going to be a zero. At that point, stop. That's one situation in which you would stop. So, if it's like an x to the fifth, five rows down you're going to stop, right? Because you're going to take five derivatives to break the powers down. Two. Here's another situation in which you should stop. Uh, if a row, if you get a row that is a constant <coughs> times the original integral. Now that step actually deals with the revolving situation. Eventually, if you're going to do a bunch of integration and you end up with the same thing that you started with, this is what you're going to actually see happening, right? So that, that's like, I mean, we're going to do examples, but just to quickly, like let's say you had an e to the x cosine three x or something like that, right? When you start doing this table, differentiate this to e to the three x, four e to the two uh, x. Here, if I start integrating this, that's going to be 1 third sine 3x, integrate that, minus 1 ninth cosine 3x. Notice what this row is. If you look at this row, it ends up being minus 4 over 9 times the original. Do you see that? Right? It's, it's minus 4 over 9 times e to the 2x cosine 3x. And you started out with an e to the 2x cosine 3x. You get a constant times what you started with. In that case, stop, right? You, this integration, this tabular method will only need two rows, right? So that's the other situation when you stop the table. 
Don't see, we're going to do it now. That's fine. Third situation where you would stop the table. And this one takes a little bit of a, a little bit of insight, but you can you can outwork insight with just like doing a bunch of wrongs. Uh, stop when you get a row that's easy to integrate. All right. You keep going until you see a row that looks like, hey, I could do that integral. I don't need another integration by parts. I can I clearly see a nice substitution or a basic rule can work at this point. Right? So if you're not getting zero and you're never going to get the original back, the next thing you do is just wait. Just wait for the opportune moment, right? Once you say a row, oh, hey, I can deal with that row, right? Now, if integration parts can work, it will come, right? Have faith. Uh, let's let's put this into action. Now let's do that back. Now before he seemed quite daunting, quite annoying, quite I can't be daunted, it's on quiz, right? Now hopefully you can appreciate what that would look like with the previous method. Lots of nested parentheses, lots of expansions and combining like terms, that sort of thing. Right? Or where you write an e square when you really meant to write an e to the x. This is just how it's got so long your brain forgot you gave up. Okay, let's do Taylor method here. What would it look like? Well, this is the U that's going to be the DV, so I'm going to start drawing a tail below it. And what I'm going to do? Keep differentiating. 5x to the fourth, 20x cubed, 60x squared, 120x, 120, 0. Now, once you see that 0, That fulfills the first thing, then you stop. Okay? <laughs> you got the zero, stop the table. Then you just keep integrating this guy until you get to that part. So in e to the x is easy. Integrate e to the x, 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 e to the x. E to the x. E to the x. And we're going to do those multiplications. So this plus this minus this plus this minus this plus this minus that plus. And we we'll just write that out. So it's x to the fifth, e to the x, minus 5x to the fourth, e to the x, plus 20x cubed, e to the x, minus 60x squared, e to the x, plus 120x, e to the x, minus 120, e to the x, plus the integral of 0, which of course you know that's just 0 plus c. That's the answer. Don't believe me? Differentiate. <laughs> Take you less than a minute to do like five integration by parts. And that's the power of tabular integration. This is what it's called. And it is integration by parts. It's just another way to set it out, another way to visualize it. So every situation in which integration by parts will work, this method will work as well. Right? It, it is integration by parts. It's just a different perspective on the, on, the, on the strategy. And to convince you of that, what we're going to do is we're going to redo some of the examples that we already did. So you can see that I can use the table in all the situations that I mentioned. And then we'll do even more examples. Because that's how we're going to survive. Lots of examples. That's the first part of this class. It's just a lot of drills. Do a lot of examples. More examples until you're sick of doing examples. OK, so uh, I think you're, you can be convinced that the x to the x example would work. Here. But uh, let's do the next one. x squared ln x. Yes. 
did that. Now, first thing you want to do is, of course, you want to rewrite it so that the U is on the left side. That's how the method works. Your U is going to be the LNX. So, differentiate 1 over x. Now, here's something that you can immediately start to notice, or hopefully you will immediately start to notice. Once I differentiate an LNX and I keep differentiating, I'm never going to get an LNX again, right? So, situation two, not going to happen, right? Also, if I keep differentiating this, I'm never going to get a zero. Situation one, not going to happen, right? So my best bet at this point is situation three. I want to keep going until I get a row that's easy to integrate. Now, once you know that that's what you're going to do, I don't suggest differentiating more than one row at a time, right? Just do this, then that, this, then that. Just keep going because you're just watching for a row to, to be a nice one. So at this point, I'll just do it one time, then do this one time. And at this point, I'm like, if I multiply across, that's easy to integrate. That's the power, right? That's, that's easy. So, this times this plus that times that minus. So that's x cubed over 3 ln x minus the integral of this times that. And that's easy to do. That's power rule. And that is the answer that we got last time. What about the one with the repeats? Okay, let's do that one. Let's do this one. How, how, does, how, do you, how does the table deal with this one? Okay, so you differentiate e to the x, e to the x. You want to integrate your sine x minus cosine x minus sine x. Notice that this row is just, uh, it's actually a constant times the original. So at this point, you stop. It's minus 1 times the original integral. So this times this plus sine, this times this minus sine, this times this plus sine. So this time this plus sine but it's a minus, so that's a minus e to the x cosine of x. This time this, the minus times a minus, becomes plus e to the x sine x. This times that, so it's a plus, but it's a minus here, so that's minus the integral of e to the x sine x. That stops the process, and at this point you realize, oh, that's just algebra. And by the way, there's no nested parentheses. You don't have to multiply anything out. It's all just, it's already unfolded for you with this method. So you can see even clearer, oh, the, it's the same guy. I can just move that to the other side, divide by two. And that's the answer we got last time. You could essentially forget the integration by parts formula and what we did before and always do this and you'll be fine. Personally, I mix and match. If it's going to take one step in a table, I usually just use the formula anyway, but you could essentially forget the formula. Just know it's going to be fine. It's called the tabular method for integration. It gets you to do integration by parts much more efficiently. Questions? You all get what we're To make sure that we got what we're doing, we're going to do a bunch more examples. Many more examples. Okay. In fact, we probably won't finish all of them today, so I'm going to write them all down. Do as many as we can, and of course, you, by Tuesday, will get through the rest of them because we're going to start the class with a quiz on everything I did this week. So. It will, of course, include integration by parts. Let's do these. A integral. Let's learn how to integrate LA. It's about time. Oh, LA. 
is a very important function. You know how to integrate it. Let's learn also how to integrate the inverse sine function. Let's integrate e to the square root of x. Let's also integrate Let's integrate x squared e to the x cubed. Let's integrate radical x cosine radical x. Let's integrate x cubed sine of x squared. Let's jump into it. Random integral shows up. Is this a basic rule book? No. But gosh darn it, that should be a basic rule, shouldn't it? But you should know how to integrate the natural log of x. Let's learn. Let's, let's see how we integrate the natural log of x. Simplify things basic rule? No. Substitution rule? No. Technically, you could figure this out with a substitution. But it'll actually land you into another integration by parts situation, so might as well do integration by parts now. Um, what's your u and your dv? So remember, ln of x is one thing. Yeah. Right. So you can't have the ln and the x dx, right? ln of x is one thing. At this point, somebody's like, what trick is this? Like, there are not even two parts there. There are always two parts. That's the first thing. What is the other part? One. X. One. Oh. <laughs> there's always another part, right? So it looks like there's one function. There, there are two essentially speaking. I can make one the other guy. That guy would fall in the A category, this guy would fall in the L category. Ln would be the U. And one dx would be the dv. Now at this point, that should also be clear because there's no way that your ln could be dv because you'd have to integrate it to find v and we're trying to figure out how to integrate. <laughs> so it has to be the part that you want to differentiate. Um, but you can follow the Yate and just put in this phantom one that's kind of always around. It's kind of always there watching. Like, whatever. Differentiate, integrate. And so we get u times v minus the integral of v times du. You usually don't write, I'm just writing that out. But it's okay if you skip that step and just. I'll believe you know how to multiply x and 1 over x in here. Um, so now 1. Does the base rule apply? Yeah, the power rule applies. Because 1 is x to the 0. And you just integrate that, and you get x. And that is your answer. And for us, this is more than an example. This is our new inductee into the basic rules as for, from this point and forevermore. I do not expect you to have to derive this. I expect you to know this. That is the integral of ln x. x ln x minus x. This is a new basic formula. That's how you integrate the natural law. The, the integral of ln x is x ln x minus x plus c. You're supposed to know that. We know that. We're all 
another basic rule. the sine inverse, so that has to be the u, but also, if there's a 1 here, that is an a, and this would be a, a, an i. That's i comes I. before a in the octave, okay. so uh, the sine inverse is going to be our u. My dv is going to be 1, dx. du, what is the derivative of sine inverse? This is u times v minus the integral of v du. And how do you do that integral? This is going to be an idea you want to get used to. Substitution doesn't always have to be a u. Substitution is what you need it to be to make the thing simpler. A square is going to be simpler. Why? Because I take the square root, it's going to get rid of the square root for me. I won't have to worry about half powers now. Now I'm going to differentiate both sides. Derivative of u squared is 2u du. Derivative of that is minus 2x dx. So, I get minus u du is equal to x dx. And I'm going to plug that in. So uh, here is my uh, x dx. That guy's now minus u du. Right. Minus u du <coughs> over. Now this guy here. Well, that's now just u, right? My u is the square root. It's just 1. Super easy integral, right? Power root. 1 du. So what's the integral? No. So the fact that that's a u and not an x, it matters. Can we, can we just drop this little notation here? No, the note you have to pay attention to the notation. That's not x. A lot of you got caught because you're not paying attention to the notation. What is u? Well, it's the square root of that guy. That's 
Sorry. Now, of course, you could have done it probably the way that the typical Calc 2 student would have done it. Calc 1 student, sorry. Um, now, yes, let's say you have x over the radical of 1 minus x squared. You could say u equals 1 minus x squared if you want to be a little bit more Calc 1 traditional. Um, so, you know that mean where that, there's that guy thinking and then bring it over and then it gets really something like x squared that'll work but 1 minus x squared is better u squared equals 1 minus x squared even better but, yeah. here your du would be minus 2x dx and so the integral is going to become minus 1 half times integral of 1 over radical of u du not crazy but there are going to be situations where just throwing in that square there makes your life so much easier. Here, so life is a little bit harder. How do I integrate that? Does the basic rule apply? No. Can I simplify it so it looks like a basic rule? Yes. That's u to the minus 1 half. So the power rule applies. Add 1 to the power, you get positive 1 half, divide by the new power, which means multiplying by 2, get minus c plus c. And of course, your u is 1 minus x squared, so you get minus the radical of 1 minus x squared plus c. It's the same answer. Here we had the negative of the negative, that's why it's a plus, but the same answer. A little bit harder work, but you'll be surprised. Just throwing in sometimes, just making a little tweak to your substitution. We're going to start doing a lot of that. Can make your life a lot easier. You have to, in this case, you have to injure it one as opposed to that. Let's keep going. Turns out that that's impossible. I don't mean hard. I mean impossible. Like you can't come up with a function that if you differentiate, it, you will get e to the x squared. That one little two up there, the little nuances that you think you can just forget, makes a world of difference. This is an impossible integral. You can't actually do this. We literally make something up to figure that out. Just like how we made up i equals the square root of minus one, so that we can solve equations. Yeah, we have to make someone up that. We're just going to say this guy is the answer to this integral because we can't actually figure one out. You can't do that. You can't actually actually do that. It turns out this one you can actually do though. It turns out if you put a half here instead of a two, it's actually doable. Uh, how do you do it though? Substitute base rule? No. Simplify the base rule? No. Substitution work? Not totally clear. And also, if you were to jump into integration by parts right off the bat, like, hey, this is probably just like one of those guys. It's just like this, isn't it? Right? Javon's just trying to trick me with a, an invisible one right here. Right? I can just go u equals, let's differentiate that guy since we don't know how to integrate. You would get du would be 1 over 2 radical x e to the radical x, your v would be x. Then you would get u times v minus the integral 
of V du. Now you get the radical x e to the radical x dx. Which looks worse. And again, you could dig yourself out of this hole, but we'll wait for when you get more experience for you to be able to do that. Jumping into integration by parts directly might get you lost. It temporarily puts you in a, a situation that seems like it's worse than, it, than you started with. So it turns out the first thing you want to do here is a substitution. What would you substitute? Well, you always substitute what makes the thing complicated. Why is this complicated? Well, that's easy. Why was it easy? Because we just had an x. If only that square root of x was just a single variable. I don't want to worry about a half power. So that would be your idea for the substitution. Now I'm going to use a t instead of a u for the substitution here. t equals radical x is going to be my first substitution. But wait, I don't see the derivative in it. Hold on. You could just differentiate both sides. You get 1 over 2 radical x. But uh, let's square both sides first. Then differentiate 2t dt equals dx. Now I'm going to actually plug that in. So I'm going to have the integral of e to the t times my dx is 2t dt. So it turns out that this guy I can think of as an integration by parts hidden in here, but you would of course first do the substitution. That comes higher in the list than integration by parts does. Now at this point, now you guys will probably memorize what this looks like already, but uh, at this point you have u equals t, d v equals e to the t, d t, d u equals d t, d equals e to the t. So this is 2 times u times v minus the integral of d And what was your t? Well, it's radical x. That's your answer. That's how we integrate e to the radical x. Lead off with a substitution to get rid of the complicated looking thing. And finish off with an integration by parts. There's another way you could look at this, but uh, I think that's probably the better mindset I want you actually to have. Always try to apply a substitution. Sometimes when it doesn't look like it's going to work, just try it. You might be surprised. Before long, you'll have more intuition of when a substitution might work that your naked eye might not even see it can work. You'll, you'll just know it will work. We'll talk about that later. About this one. Yep. Um, I don't want to be rude, but class is over and I have to go home. Oh, class is over. Okay. All right, we'll stop there. We'll pick up with that next time. But of course, you guys have to do uh, everything else. I didn't call your name in the beginning. If you weren't on my roster, you need to see me now so I can make sure you're signed up for everything. And I'll see you Tuesday.